You got to with the hottest shit. You can't get anywhere else. On my hip hop. Yeah. Yo, what's poppin'? It's Vito, baby, and I'm on my hip-hop-ish. Um, yeah, man, The Voice season four was definitely, for me, a dream come true, man. Just to perform, just to perform in front of so many people, man. Uh, I think it got like 17 million viewers that season, man. And to perform in front of so many people was definitely a blessing. To be able to meet Usher and work with him, he was definitely, to for him to be my mentor, man. I've always wanted to meet him since a kid. He's definitely an inspiration. I look, I look up to him, and I still do. I sing and I dance. And uh, to look up to him and to get advice and just just how to do it, how he stayed relevant, so how he's been able to stay so relevant for the 20 years, 20 plus years he's been doing it, is just so, definitely something I, I, I took in and, and I, I put, it, put it into my work every day. And I think it, it, it was definitely a humbling experience. Although, I, it, although it was, I lost my mom during the show, I definitely feel like it made me stronger, a better person, because I still had to go on and do and sing and perform and be an artist in the midst of all of that. So it, it showed me how to how to hone all of my emotions in and still perform for the world and still make people feel what I feel. So it it, it taught me a lot. It really taught me a lot. Um, and I'm thankful for it. And I'm blessed. It's, it was definitely a blessing, man. Without the voice, I probably wouldn't be where I am right now because it, it exposed me. It showed me so many things, so many new things. Gave me a glimpse of the tour life. Uh, getting up early in the morning and and staying up until three four o'clock in the morning filming had to go to bed get back up at eight o'clock do the same thing so it, it just it really gave me it gave me a, a taste of everything man it gave me a taste of, of, of superstar definitely I'm from Michigan man Ben Harbor Michigan it's a, a, a little city it's about maybe two hours from Detroit the major city but um you know growing up as a, as a kid I had it I had it pretty rough man but I don't I don't take that and I won't and you know expect people to feel sorry for me because it made me who I am. I'm thankful for all of my struggles and all my trials and tribulations because what a lot of people don't understand is that you know uh, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to be able to go through something and come out of it. You know what I mean? Me growing up uh you know homeless, I, we were homeless me and my uh three two brothers and my mom we were homeless for years, you know, a couple years, 2 3 years and you know my mom never gave up. You know she could have. She could have said I quit, you know what I'm saying? But she didn't. And, you know, that taught me to be strong, you know, because no matter what, you never turn your back on family. You never give up. You always keep your faith in God. And my mom taught me that. And growing up, man, it was a lot of stuff that we didn't have. But one thing we did have was a strong family and a strong bond. And I think that's most important. Coming from where I come from, we didn't really have much. Ben Harbor, small town, you know, not really big in population. Everybody hated on each other. You know, and kind of like any anywhere else, but I didn't really have the opportunity like I have here in Atlanta. You know what I mean? Just, you know, going to school, man, no clean clothes. I'm pretty sure anybody, you know, that grew up in my situation know what that feel like. And just having to wear the same clothes, no clean clothes and stuff like that. But stuff like that and not having a place to stay, not having food on, my, on the table, you know, so not having anything for Christmas makes me appreciate it now. You know, I appreciate, you know, and I'm thankful to have a, a washer and dryer at my disposal. You know, saying to have food. I don't waste food because I, other times I didn't have it. You know what I mean? I don't do that. So it definitely taught me a lot, man, coming from where I come from, Ben Harbor, and uh, just growing up, growing into a man. It, it, what it was, I had to grow up quick. I had to become, I had to become independent. I had to become a man quick. You know, at 13, at 13, 14 years old, you know, so I was trying to figure out ways to get money up to help pay the rent. You know, help pay the bills at 13, which, you know, the normal 13 year old, 12 years old, that's not, that's nothing you need to worry about. But in my situation, me being who I am and me loving my mom so much, I couldn't see her struggle like that. I couldn't see her stress and stuff like that. You know, she never really won, she was never really one to cry about stuff like that. She always say, God gonna make it work. And I promise you, every time she say that, it always happened. He always fix it. So, and like, it's, She's very, very spiritual. She's definitely uh, was was the one that really kept me close to God, too. Music, I always say this, too. Music is what emotions sound like, you, if, if that makes sense. It's almost something like it's like a, a it's almost like you look at a, a, at a painting and you can see different pictures within the painting. It really just depicts, you know, it, you, you can say I love you. It's only a, a few ways you can say I love you. But in a song, you can say it a hundred different ways. You know what I mean? It says you can say you can, you know, put words together in a song that means I love you. That means I love you, but 
I don't, I mean, you know, I'm, it's, it means I love you, but I don't need you. You know what I mean? It, it really just, it speaks from the heart, man. The heart, it's a lot of things that we really can't find the words to say, like, you know, how you feel about somebody, but when you write a song and you, you put music to it, man, it, it, it just, it really goes deeper in the soul, man. I, that's really, that's, that's how, that's how I, that's how I uh, define it. I would say that. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I was in church, you know, but and even I don't even look at like a lot of people say because like church is one of those places where they don't really boo you. But in my church, not in my church, they're going to they gonna let you know what's going on in my church. They're going to let you know, oh, well, you, you good, baby. You sound good. But, you know, this ain't this ain't for you. That's how my church was. And my mom, man, she she hit me. Uh, she, she surprised me one day and she was like, uh, hey, well, my son, my son going to sing something for y'all. I was surprised. I was young and too, probably like 10. I got up there and I sung, man, and the warm embrace that the that the church had for me made me feel so good inside. And I knew from that day, I would, that's what I wanted to do. I wanted to feel that way. Every time I got on stage and sung for somebody, that's how I wanted to feel. I wanted to move people like I moved them at 10 years old. I wanted to move people like that for the rest of my life. I kind of craft my style uh, uh, off of, I would say, uh, let me, I'm going to start back and say Stevie. Stevie Wonder. I love Stevie Wonder, man. He, I think he's an artist that has... Uh, definitely evolved with the time he hadn't he has not he hasn't came out with anything uh, new yet new right now but i think stevie one of the, stevie stevie wonder is one of those artists who will definitely live on forever also the temptations i love the temptations man they were like really one of the one of the first uh big successful groups like you know like a, a quartet so to speak they were really one of the most one of the first big to do it also usher of course um, I looked up to him, man, from all the way back to his first album. A lot of people didn't like his first album, but I liked it. I saw the growth. You know what I mean? Um, of course, Michael Jackson. Uh, I love uh, Sam Cooke. Sam Cooke's Otis Redding. Like, I just, and when I say these names, like Sam Cooke and Otis Redding, is my style of singing. I sing with soul and passion. And I think a lot of singers, uh, not, to, not to throw shade on anybody, but I think a lot of singers out right now don't really sing with the passion that the song requires. They really just rely on the beat. Oh, the beat, the beat gonna drive it. No, man, you got to think about it. A lot, of, not everybody like to go to the club. You know what I'm saying? Not, not everybody like to, uh, you know, go out and do this and do that here in the club. They, they actually like to listen to to lyrics and listen to to, to meaningful music. And I think, I, although I dance and I make club songs and stuff like that, I'm still, I still got the element, I still got the element of a uh, soul, of soul, and to be able to uh, make you feel what I'm what I'm singing. And I think that's very important as an artist, man, for you to be able to transition from a club song to a straight power ballad and make people feel it. You know, you know, make give people goose pimples. I think that's definitely uh, essential. And I think it's it's a part of artist development for a lot of artists. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, what's, what's the record you push on right now? Uh, we got we you know we we put out a bunch of stuff right now, man. We got a, um a, the, what a latest actual song I put out was "Give It to You." It was a you know along with like more of a '70s disco with a modern feel, kind of kind of real real smooth uh real smooth feel to it, real, real dope song man. But we just picked a single, um, we just picked a single. We gonna release that next year, uh, uh, beginning of next year, January 2015. It's called All I Wanna Do. It's a real dope record man, urban like urban pop with a crossover with a crossover appeal. Uh, we definitely gonna get a, a a major video to it. So that's probably gonna be the single that we um we gonna start doing major promotion for. Uh, through, throughout the uh, throughout the holidays, just you know, just to get people ready, just to uh, kind of build the anticipation of it. But the single we picked, the single we did a focus group probably a week ago, probably a week ago, man. You know, and I think that's 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 one of the things that labels and artists don't do too is focus groups. You you know what I mean? Like people, like a lot of artists pick songs because they like it, or because you know this person like it, or their team like it. But what they don't understand is that you know you got a team, but some people are biased. You know what I'm saying? Like for example, I wouldn't say I wouldn't. I'm gonna keep it 1,000 with you. You know, so I'm, well, I can't. I can't even really use myself as, as an example because I'm actually say what what I think. You know, whether it be oh it sucked, I don't like it at all. But you got some people who wouldn't say who wouldn't say that because they don't want to hurt your feelings. But when you get a focus group together and you see these people, they don't even know you. They never seen you. Never don't know what type of person you are. Your personality, anything. They hear the music, and if they like it, oh I love this, and you got you one. You know what I mean? So, and I think that's real essential today. For, that's why me, I, my team and I, we came together and we was like, you know what, man, we need to do a focus group. Like they used to do back in Motown. You know what I'm saying? Like how, how they used to do it. Temptations used to do it. Marvin Gaye used to do it. 
Al Green used to do. All these folk did, they did the same thing, and they got timeless music. That's, you got timeless music from it. Because you do a focus group and thinking you got a hit single, and you really don't. So, you know, when you do that, you back to the drawing board. You know what I'm saying? That's what, it, that's what it's all about. You know what I'm saying? So, actually, the songs that we picked, man, like, it was a, we had a, a, um, a pretty diverse crowd. You know what I'm saying? We had, we had people from 18 to 40, 42. They came out of show love, so, and I thought I thought that you know that, that and like, I wasn't even, I wasn't even in the room when they when they were listening to the music, and when I came in the room, everybody wanted to take pictures and give me hugs and everything, so that made me feel really good. I was like, okay, they must have liked something, you know what I mean? So, it was a few people in there that um that were fans and knew who I were, but you know the majority of people that was there, they didn't even know who I were who I was, you know what I'm saying? So, it was definitely uh something we did. So all I want to do probably gonna be the next single we push, and it's gonna be stupid for 2015. Uh, my overall goal, man, is to uh, well, well, first, overall goal is to just get out there, man. I'm, I got, I got, a, I got a pretty, n a nice size fan base, but the ultimate goal is to to grow as a person, as an artist, to uh, to just you know, what I'm saying, start to start to go deep, more depth, go deeper into the artistry, and you know, doing more shows, go start a tour or something, we'll hop on somebody tour, man, and uh. My ult the ultimate goal, man, is just to really, like, you know, sell, sell some singles, sell a lot of albums, man. Just, you know, get my niche in this industry, man. A lot of people, a lot of people know who I am, but a lot, a lot don't. There's a lot of people that don't know me. And my goal is to reach everybody, no matter, whether it be through music, be through inspiration, or be through what I've been through. Somebody been through something similar, and they see how I came up and see how I got through it. Whether it reach, if I, whether, however I reach people, that's my main goal is to reach and touch people, inspire people. Yeah. And most of the covers you you remaking these yeah. covers and it sound like your own. Like like you give me give me your inspiration behind that. Oh man, I think my inspiration behind that would simply be take a song, you listen to it now. You listen to say for example, you take a uh you know, a Chris Brown song. Chris Brown a great artist, a big fan of him. But my goal is to do it better than him. You know, try to make this song better than what it already is. You know, so I wouldn't necessarily say do it better than him, but make the song better than what it already is. It, which and I do, I do, I do that. The way I do it is I change the melody up. Sometimes I, it, it might it might take to change the lyrics. You know, add your own little flair to it, add some harmonies here, go up where he went down. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. And it makes it and, it, and it gives it my unique touch. Of course, I say it's Vito, baby, all the time in the song to let people know it's me because so many people do covers, man. And you know, I got thousands and thousands, really millions of covers on YouTube. And you know, that's just one of my stamps that I put on there, man. My whole, the whole process is to just listen to the song. What can I do different? You know, so you got songs like um, classics, classic songs. You don't, I don't touch you. If you, when you do classic songs, you leave them as is. You don't, you know, you, you don't really change anything too, 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 too much because it'll stray, stray from the, 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 the core of the song. But like new stuff though, yeah, man, I just listen to it, man, and just figure out what I could do different to make it better. Crazy fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Crazy fan story. Let me see. Let me go back. I got a, I got a couple. Um, I think I was in a, I was in L.A. That's where it was. I was in L.A. I was at the movies. I was actually on The Voice. I was at the movies. And uh, it, I wouldn't say it's crazy. I was at the movies. I was at the movies, and a fan came up. She knew who I was, but she didn't have, she didn't have anything to sign, so I signed a breast. You know, so that was that was pretty cool. I, you know, I like that. Hey, you know, I, I say, all right, you know, hey, what I'm going to say? So I think that was pretty crazy, man. And um, I had a bunch of crazy fan stories, man. I got some I got some weird ones. I got some a weird fan story. Oh, man. You might get some. I might get an email. Ah, oh, man, I might get it. I might get a message in my Facebook or something or on Twitter saying something crazy. Like, I want you to do this to me. All right. Yes, man, I'm telling you, it's like that. It's like that, man. You know, you. I'm going to open it up and be like, I don't know what she looked like, you know, you know what she looked like, but, but you know, man, you get some crazy stuff, man, you get some crazy fan, but really, honestly, man, I don't, I don't really indulge in just the, the fan, you know, the, the, you know, the really getting too personal with fans, like, especially on that level right there, man, because, like I said, at the end of the day, they're fans, you know, they're fanatics, they're fanatical about you, so it's like, you know, you don't, you kind of want to keep, keep that, that dis, keep it, exactly, you know what I mean, so that's what it's all about, but I get some crazy messages, man, you, you'd be surprised, there's some crazy messages.
Usher's been a, a, actually a major asset to the uh, to the project. Um, he does what like executive producing it. Like he pretty much gives like the uh, kind of the yes on it or the okay maybe. Like I like it, but you know I think it needs this. I think this needs to be changed. This needs to be changed. And I, I trust his uh, I trust his ear. After all, he is Usher. He, he multiple hits. You know. Um, so he does, yeah, I'm definitely working close with him. Every song that I do, I send to him. You know what I'm saying? Every song that I do, I send to him. He's Like I said, he's busy with the tour and everything, getting ready for tour, but he still takes the time to listen to my music and give give me his feedback and give me his changes and his thoughts. So that's, I, you know, that's a blessing as well because he could just say no. Give me a Um, Simplicity. Simple. Don't be, try not, try not to do too much. You know, every song doesn't require 10,000 backgrounds. You know, so every song doesn't require so many words. Sim, sim, you know, less is more. You know what I'm saying? So that's one of the things that he stresses a lot. Simplicity. Like, you got to think about it. Um, a lot of consumers today, they gravitate towards the more simple songs. Although Sam Smith is a great singer and he's a balladeer, but his songs, you listen to them, they're simple. It's, it's love songs. He isn't doing too much. He, the run, he isn't running all over the place. He's simple. He's simple, but, he's, but he has a beautiful voice and his songs mean something. You know what I mean? So just really one of the things that he should probably stress the most is simplicity, man. Just keep it simple. Every every song requires different elements. You know what I'm saying? But at the, at the end of the day, try not to overdo it. Just don't overdo it. Even with covers, don't overdo them. Some songs don't require you to yell and scream all the time. What would you say to someone who wants to be in the studio? Ah, man, just, well, just, just do it. If you feel it, do it. You know what I'm saying? Don't overthink. Overthinking kills your happiness, man. Like it's all the time. I overthink sometimes when I'm when I'm writing, and I just let it, I leave it alone and come back the next day because overthinking is not good. Um, I think be as original as possible, be as original as you can, and that's why why I do my covers the way I do them because it's original. A lot of people sing covers and they pretty much do the same melody that the artist did, and I feel like if you add some originality to it people will gravitate towards it first. Because, you know, okay, we, so we heard uh, Usher do the, do the verse like this, but, you know, you sing it, it's like you, it's just like you sing it. But when you add your own flair to it, or change up a few lyrics, that's original. It might be a cover, but it's still original. My thing would be just to just believe in yourself because you got to believe in yourself first to make anybody believe in you. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that's just like me. If I see somebody believe in what, they doing, what, what they're doing, it's going to make me believe in them. You know what I mean? So just believe in yourself, stay true to yourself, and just keep working. Because there's so many people out here doing doing the same thing. Outwork them. Outwork the next man. You know, my dad always told me that. Outwork the next man. Don't never let the next man outwork you. I guess it's true I'm not good at a one-night stand. But I still need love because I'm just a man. These nights never seem to go to plan. I don't want to leave, will you hold my hand? Oh, won't you stay with me? Cause you're all I need. This ain't love, it's clear to see. But darling, stay with me. It's Vito, baby. Follow me on Twitter at Vito the Singer, Instagram Vito the Singer, YouTube Vito the Singer, Facebook Vito the Singer. That's V E D O T H E S I N G E R. Really put me in Google. Everything will come up. Vito, baby. You rocking with the hottest shit. You can't get anywhere else. On my hip hop.